for some reason, and I've never really gotten this on. <laughs> oh shit! Went down the wrong pipe there. I could tell. Are you good? You need yeah. some water? No, we're good right now. You need a pat on the back? I'm on your back. Um, Raise your arms like a baby. Does that work? <laughs> For babies. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm Perry, and I'm your host. And it's the the new year. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. 2019. Right. It's going to be a great year. <laughs> Curtis and Swan are with me today. We're hanging out and talking about our year in review, of course. Guys, welcome to the the, the studio, the bourbon room. Yeah, the bourbon room. Yeah, with a new, with a new fancy bourbon cabinet right behind me. Very yeah, fancy. You're going to need a lock on that one. Uh there's a keyhole, but I don't have a key yeah, for it. I don't know Close if that's enough. functional. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally decorative. Yeah. It's strictly <laughs> decorative. Uh, we are starting the show off, of course, as we always do, with Flying Blind, which is a pour that uh, I'd like to blind the guests on. And um, this time around, this is something that... So as I was saying, too, this is uh, you know our, our year in review episode. This is our, also our best of 2018. And uh, this actually holds a little bit of significance from... Uh, from 2018, from yeah, um, and I'll get I'll get to it here in a second once we actually try it. But nutty, yeah, <laughs> nutty, it's, nice it's very it. nutty on the nose. I would say it smells a little higher proof. <sighs> lots really? of lots of caramel on there too. Higher proof. I will say nothing about the the proof okay. on it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be, yeah. But you know, my my nose always is like sure, sure, hundred and sixty proof doesn't smell <laughs> like anything. But it's straight up normally. Yeah. Did you uh, barrel age some Everclear in here? Is that what this is? Yes, that's exactly okay. what I did. Yeah, it's uh, sitting behind the bar right now. This was my first great project of 2018. Was uh, can I get bourbon from Everclear? <laughs> <laughs> you did do that though, didn't you? Not Mm-mm. from Everclear, but. No, from uh, some white dog. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's still aging. I haven't tried it yet. Mm. I feel like I need to just in case like it's hit a sweet spot. I don't know. I don't or maybe know. it hasn't. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we're ta- we ta- I've taste tasted. It. Swan's yeah, tasted. Did, Swan, what, do you, what have you thought about it? Uh, definitely not higher proof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just kind of smelled it on the nose, but yeah, no. No, no, it's good. All the stuff you listed on the nose is right there in the taste. That the the peanut brittle kind of takes a little bit more of a, a backseat to some of the caramel and the the like actual nutty notes. Yeah, to it as well. There's a little bit of spice, but not too much. Kind of like in the middle of the palate. But overall, I I I enjoy. It. I enjoy this part. Pretty a lot. solid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like it. The, um, the finish isn't as as long as I would like for it to be. Yeah, it's a little hot on the finish for me. Mm-hmm. Like Good not little, the Kentucky hug, but like the just a little like spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any guesses about this one, guys? I want to say Heaven Hill Bottom and Bond, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> kinda I was kind of leaning guess. Heaven Hill too, but I don't know about the Bottom and Bond. Well, you're both half right. It is a bottle and bond product, mm. but it's not Heaven Hill. It is from Heaven Hill. It's Old Fitz bottled and bond. Oh, this was my um, first like big find of uh, of 2018. The one that started the Dusties. Yeah, and, the old um, Dusties. Not a whole lot of it left, but the old dust bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> is your bourbon collecting dust bunnies? Come down to Justin's House of Bourbon. <laughs> that was an uh, <laughs> unnecessary plug for Justin's House of Bourbon. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this was uh, what kind of kicked off my uh, like wanting to hunt a little bit more in in 2018. And you know, Chad talked about how good this was, and I think I might have had it at one point too before I found it. And I was like, "Well, I would really love to find a bottle." And sure enough, ran into 
I mean, as you do when you're hunting, just a random store. And I was like, there it is (laughs) (laughs) for a handle. So anyway, I saw it a few places, and then as soon as they announced the decanter style bottles with the old Fitz bottle and bond, gone, totally gone. Couldn't find it. Yep, yep. I miss this. Yeah, this is a good yeah, solid, solid everyday mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I miss it a lot. But anyway, so before we get into everything, and um, we talk about the good and the bad and the ugly of uh, 2018, I got to ask you guys, what have you been drinking recently? Knob Creek. <laughs> single barrel. <laughs> no, Believe it or not, this has only been in my possession for about two weeks, and it's it's about gone, but it's pretty good. Uh, we got a single barrel in the place that I work, so I picked that up. Doesn't everybody know where you work at this point? Probably. I don't know. I haven't had anybody come visit me. We'll let them do some more work just in case they don't, yeah. like if we have new listeners. Yeah. So anyway. Go listen to yeah. previous podcasts. Old episodes. Yeah. I have been drinking uh, Woodford. Really? Really. Mm. Why? Gift. Just Just straight... Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> it was a gift. Um, <laughs> and it's a- actually a pretty, pretty funny story. Well, it's not funny. It's just like actually pretty underwhelming probably, but it, it was kind of cool. <laughs> um, uh, Daniel, he went to, uh, or a friend of mine, he went to uh, um, not Liquor World, Liquor, wine, and whatever. What is Total it? wine? Total wine. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Took me a while. He went to Total Wine, and the uh, master distiller was there mm. and was signing bottles. And he went up cool. and was like, yeah, you know, um, he does uh, the – this is my bourbon podcast. And he was like, oh, yeah, Perry? And and I was like – and he goes, no, no, the Curtis, uh, he does – he, like, co-hosts with it. On, on a, a few episodes, and he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay." And he said, and then on the on Wait the bottle it says, "Hold on, look it on says, Perry's face right on. now." <laughs> it says, "Tune into Good Taste." <laughs> so, are you telling me that the, the master distiller at Woodford Reserve knows that the podcast exists? Yeah, no, he knows what it's the heck? Out, he knows it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that's really cool. So when's that interview coming out with him? Um, <laughs> yeah, for real. Hey, Chris Morris, uh, you're going to be on the show soon. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Thank you for listening. That is one of the most awesome things I've ever heard. Whew, all right. I'm yeah, going to try to wipe fun. the sweat from my brow and yeah. continue. Um, but it was funny. He was like, oh, yeah, Perry. <laughs> well, Kurt, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but great. Cool anyway. That's so awesome. The note he put it was like, tune in to great taste that is the coolest thing i'm just all right awesome yeah so that's i fun. don't realize i guess how sometimes like how many people listen to the show and then all of a sudden this yeah. happens and i'm like or even well, if you did if the, it's not right. listening it's uh it's just aware you know you're aware of it yeah so. all right well chris you're gonna yeah, you're cool. gonna be on the show soon um i, I guess kind of speaking of that um we're we're just coming off of the new year of course and um we went to obc for New Year's, and um, they had a flight. I saw of, that of Pappy, yeah, for New Year's. So I got to ring in the New Year drinking Pappy Twenty Three, which I did not realize that, that I. Price point. <laughs> the flight, yeah, the flight was fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why didn't I go? <laughs> Because you were in Disney, I thought. No, I was there. Oh, dang it. I was literally like sitting in my house. Oh, man. Across the street. <laughs> we were hanging out. I was hanging out with Austin. Cable. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dang it. All right. Well, next time. Uh, opportunity lost. Yeah. Um, I, but it, it's funny that you mentioned random happenstances of being recognized because as we were at OBC, we were sitting at the table and just some random guy comes up to me and goes, hey, Perry, I really like your podcast and everything you do. Didn't introduce himself, didn't say, you know, anything else. He just said, thank you, and left. Yeah, but All shout right. out to that guy, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who you are, but I really appreciate you listening to the show and coming up and saying, hey, that was really cool. Um, my brother's birthday was also on Saturday, and I had Guinness for the first time in probably like a year and a half. Mm. I freaking love Guinness. I oh, forgot how yeah, much I solid. love it. Have you looked into getting that Guinness? It's aged in the uh, in the bullet barrels. Bullet barrels? No, yeah, I haven't yet. Have you had it? 
No, I saw a place selling it, but I didn't pick it up yet. Oh, okay. We'll have to gotta, do that. I got to find it. Yeah, we need to do another um, bourbon barrel aged beer yeah. uh-huh. episode here soon. Because I'm kind of like, I, I'm winding up with more than I expected. Like, I just kind of have some sitting in my fridge. Yeah. And just wherever, like, as we're moving, there's still stuff scattered everywhere. Anyway, yeah, we need to do that again. Okay, so before we get into it, let's pour something else. Um, we got some things on the table. Don't let's not spoil too much of what's on the table. Um, but some Legos. We got some Legos. Yes, on the table. thank you, Monica, for Legos. sending me Legos because that was really freaking cool. Um, this was one of my favorite acquisitions of 2018 too. Uh, this Why, isn't. Perry, it, is, it is just Wild Turkey 101. Why, Curtis? It is not just Wild Turkey 101. Say what? It is a 2002 eight-year Turkey 101 export that came in a liter bottle. Uh, the chat of its bourbonite and I split. So I'm pretty excited. That. About it. Yeah, this is a, a fun little bottle. So 2018 was nuts, right? <laughs> it was, yeah. We, it was bananas. It was wild. Yeah. Um, lots of really awesome things, some not so. <laughs> yeah, ups and downs, things, you know, like any other year. Sure. But, um, you know, I, w- I wanted to kind of go through what our. our highs and lows were of 2018 and then talk about you know what some of our favorite pours were too and um you know we're going to cap everything off by um talking about what our some of our our least favorite or most disappointing or worst Mm -hmm. pours of 2018 were but then also rounding it out with i did a top 10 i don't know if i'm gonna do all 10 i might just do top five um, I don't know how many you did. Did you just do one? No, I had uh, four to five. Four to five? So. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Swan? I did top three in yeah. my head and just kept canceling out ones past three. But well, we'll just... Okay. Uh, I got a couple there. Yeah. We'll just talk and have a yeah. little round table. Yeah, about sure. It. Sure. So, um, what were some of y'all's highs in the in the bourbon world for, for 2018? I'm curious. Uh, probably just finding some of the bottles that I did. I, that's honestly a lot of good stuff, some dude. of the best part of, you know, for me, it's not even just the drinking aspect. It's walking in and finding something on the shelf and then not knowing that it is it is what it is. And I'm sitting there just so excited to <laughs> take it to the counter. I'm like shaking and bringing it up to the register. Are you selling this at retail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what secondary market is? No. Okay. If you don't, <laughs> sure, I'll pay for it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, just finding some of the stuff. Like uh, the Old Forester birthday bourbon was fun to find. The BTAC stuff was fun to find. Telling Perry that I've got a good feeling about some of the drawings that we go to and it being just wildly successful for I mean, all of us that showed up. <laughs> The two drawings that we went to back to back were both times you said I have a good feeling about it. Yeah, we either had a seventy five percent success rate or a hundred percent success rate. Yeah, which is nuts. Which is unheard of. So I, you but. know, it was it was fun. Um, having Chad scream as loud as possible every time <laughs> I got my ticket called was pretty great. He did the whole full on yeah. like Ric Flair woo. Oh, you know nice. what? <laughs> That's probably my favorite thing that happened this year in Bourbon was when Chad got called second. At that drawing. Yes, that was amazing. That was fantastic. I thought he was going to fall to his knees <laughs> yeah. and praise the Lord Jesus above the and, way that he It made it so much better excited. that the one that got called just before his was like one number off mm-hmm. from the ticket, and then the second one got called. He must have jumped like high enough to stand on my shoulders. He was that excited. It was nuts. He was a happy boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, such a happy boy. <laughs> um, highs of mine. Highs and lows. Yeah. Uh, going to Bourbon and Beyond, that was awesome. Being able to go interview all those people. Yeah. To experience just that whole culture, the bourbon culture, and actually getting to know some of the those people that we always talk about and who make these products. And that was a big uh, a big up, you know? Was, was that for you? Because it kind of was for me the moment that a lot of this became real. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it became a little more than you know, two dudes in a room talking yeah. about bourbon, um, and then it actually became like, you know, these are real, yeah, people with real jobs that have yeah. companies and do you know puts on music festivals, <laughs> uh, and just to even be a a small piece in that cog, you know, yeah, that's kind of fun, and and that me even smaller, 
of a piece in that cog is pretty cool. You too. were there and you made part of it happen. That's oh, yeah, important yeah. too. Yeah, you know? I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd say that was a, a pretty good high. As far as other bourbon, um, I was able to, th- this is the first really big time that I, uh, like you were, well, you've done it a million and one times, but I actually went and searched for a few things and found some some good stuff, and I'd take it back to my house and be like, yo, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that big. It's like Weller 12 that, you know, but still. No, it's that's still, that, that's still that's a good impressive, find man. in this yeah. day and age. And so finding that at, you know, $35, I was like, yes, please. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It's real nice. So that was a, that was a few. The BTAC, you know. Yeah, we had some good BTAC. We, we had some good yeah. bourbon all year. <laughs> So highs for, highs for me, I, I mean, honestly, like the, doing, just doing the podcast has been so enjoyable and rewarding for me over the past year. I mean, from, you know, the, the relationships that I've made to, you know, the people that we've, we've gotten to meet, I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. I mean, we were hanging out with, you know, the guys from Bourbon Pursuit. Bourboner at Bourbon and Beyond. Um, got to meet Fred Minnick multiple times this this past year. Um, Dave Pickerel from Whistle Pig, R.I.P. Freaking meeting both of the the Russells, both Eddie and Jimmy this year was something that I really didn't ever think that I was going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. And you know, just to go into the distillery on a Saturday and the fact that they were both there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was just <clears throat> so totally serendipitous and, and so awesome. And, um, you know, this was the year that, uh, that neat came out. Yeah. This was the year that, uh, I had started seeing that bourbon was as important as it is. You know, I mean, it, it, it's so much more than just a nightcap or just hanging out with friends or sitting in a room chatting with with somebody else. But, you know, I, I've i felt the sense of community this year or a sense of community this year that I don't think I've ever felt really in any aspect of my life up until now. And it's it's been so cool getting to be a part of it and being accepted by everybody too. I mean, being recognized by people too is so <laughs> wild and yeah. something I never thought that it was going to, you know, ever going to have happen. Bourbon and beyond really was just incredible. I mean, besides the rain, I saw Yeah. Aside from the rain, but the awesome. fact that, I mean, <clears throat> you know, to, to speak to your point about feeling like a small cog in the big wheel, you don't I mean, it, feel that way, though. I did it first. You know? I mean, when we first got there, I mean, like, I just... It almost felt like we shouldn't have been there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but the people around you don't make... No, they, they accept, make it, yeah, they accept they you. Yeah, they don't make you feel like Yeah, yeah, but it, it's until you get to talk to those people do you, you know, not stop going... This is wrong. Yeah, <laughs> Are you sure. Let me just let me just go back home and just go sleep. Um. Yeah, I've also had some really, really good pours this year. I mean, aside from you know what made it onto like my top ten list. <clears throat> I mean, having uh, like this was the first year that I got to try dusty stuff, mm-hmm. like truly dusty products. And, uh, I mean, that that was so eye-opening for me. I mean, I got to try pre-fire, too. I got to, you know, <laughs> get to try a, uh, oh, what was it? At uh, Southern Whiskey Society, there was like a 1930s ancient age or something like that that was just fantastic. But I, it, Southern Whiskey Society had another, was another one for me, too, you know, just... Outside of like this podcast community, like the community around the podcast um, with Will and the Grease, mm. um, that was fantastic for me as well. And just making all these new friends, and you know, getting to share lives, life stories, and, and major events, and everything, 
with them has has been so awesome and and so much fun for me. But I feel like we need to talk about this turkey that we. Uh, oh, the nose yes. is wonderful. <laughs> the nose is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you over in the corner over there, just like. Yeah, you can leave me alone with this for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think the nose is the best part. Mm-hmm. I really do. Uh, it's a it's a nice little caramel bomb. Oh yeah. There. But it doesn't smell or taste like any turkey you can get today. No. No. And you know, he swears that he doesn't do anything different, but something magical's happened to this. Something changed at some point. It has a little bit of that dusty. Yeah, a little bit of the dust quality bunnies. to it. Dust bunnies. <laughs> we should make a shirt of that. <laughs> This tastes like dust bunnies. This is the dust. <laughs> Swan's just... Just nodding. I was yeah, waiting for a thought to come out of that. I wasn't that. sure if it was a disapproving nod, but it just was like a nod. No, oh, he was yeah. just very... Yeah. No, it's good. It. I think that's my goal for 2019, is to find a turkey that's looking at me on one of the bottles. <laughs> I think that's the goal. They're out there. Oh, yeah. You have to hunt for them. You really do, but they're out, they're out there. <laughs> No, that's that's great. I think the nose is better than the palate, but it's it's definitely got all of the caramel that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every really bit like, of it's there. Yeah, I really like the palate. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do too. A little bit. Um, they're both great. I'm not. What, what's interesting for me on the palate though is that it has more oak than I typically get with with turkey, and I think that's really just the fact that it's. I mean, it's aged longer than most turkey is that we have nowadays. I mean, it's age stated at eight years. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. good. It's so good. What about Lowe's, though? What have been some of your all's bourbon Lowe's for? Uh, Lowe's would be every single time I've walked in and seen BTEC over $400. Hey, man. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, People trying to make money. I get it. It just sucks because you know how much it's worth. And you know that it's good, but it's not worth that price. Yeah. Um, I've not really had a whole lot of bourbons this year that have disappointed me. There's been a few that have been uh, named like Whiskey of the Year by somebody. Because, you know, they've got so many of those awards to hand out from every single different Instagram page or... yeah. You know, if somebody's handing out that award and you try it and it just doesn't hold up to your expectations. Um, but most of the, like, the special releases this year have been really good. Yeah. So I don't I haven't had a whole lot um, that's disappointed me bourbon-wise. I've not tried that yet, by the way. Oh Well, what, what Swan is referring to is the old Ezra Barrel Proof 7-year. Good pop. Um, at uh, 117 proof, It is sitting at... 117 proof. Yeah, there you go. This did not get necessarily favorable reviews from us when we did the one-year anniversary episode. Yeah. But I did try this in a Norland glass, I think about a week and a half ago. And? It helped it. Yeah. A lot. I mean, Which all Norland's glasses, man, they just do it. There's something about it. Well, there is. It's literally science, but. Yeah. (laughs) There's literal science yeah, behind it. Yeah, there's literal science yeah. behind it. That's why it, you can smell it and taste it better. And... Swan, I'm going to I'm going to cut in I'm going to cut in front of Curtis here cuz I want to kind of piggyback off of something that you said. I I was honestly a little bit disappointed by some of the special releases this year. Really? Which ones in particular? Cuz I've not had a ton of them. <laughs> You're a little more well versed in that. Um Look, the Weller from this year, the WLW from this year, was honestly a little bit disappointing for me. And it's probably because last year's was so freaking unbelievable that I had these huge expectations for this year. And I think that, like, that really is my about my only low is that I had so many expectations for... 2018 and they just didn't necessarily all get met which is fine i mean that's you know that's my own fault that i was you know i built things up in my head 
like, you know, the Bourbon and Beyond got canceled the second day. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a huge bummer. I mean, we, we had to cancel so many interviews and so much time hanging out with good people on the second day that I, I mean, like, I couldn't help but be disappointed. Now, granted, next year, well, this year actually is going to be three days long. So, I mean, maybe sure, it'll. Yeah, got that day back. Make it up a little <laughs> bit, you know? Also, without getting too heavily into it, which I'm not going to, and Patreon will be getting this in full, there were some very specific instances this past year of just dealing with people's crap in the industry that I don't think I was fully prepared for. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, when we started the show... We started the show because we were excited to have conversations about bourbon that we were really already having, and we just wanted it to be public. And it was just, at its core, about having fun. And whatever would come from it was fine, but other people don't see it that way, and they take things a lot more seriously. And I take this very seriously. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know. I don't know how to really say this without like going super into it. But I think I was a little bit let down by the fact that there are still some people in this world who don't see bourbon for what it is. And it's a relationship and it's a community and it's, it's supposed to be fun and, and all that good stuff. But that's really my only low. Everything else was really pretty awesome. That, pretty good. That's pretty, it. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to complain too much because last year was actually, I mean, really, really good. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to see 2019 without all the awesome good things that happened in mm. 2018. But anyway. Yeah. Curtis. Yeah. I mean, as far as Milo's, I would say um, kind of like Swan was saying was just the Secondary market sometimes it's just man, it just oh, really a really good. It's point, a bummer. Actually, it really is. It's just I understand. You know, they're hard to find. People, you know, need it. I get it. Make your money. I'm sure I do too. But also, like not being able to see, you know, just just like all, all of the good bourbon. You're like, ah, I There's just want to have of a crap. little bit. Yeah, yeah, I just want to have a little bit. I mean, like the Henry McKenna. I just want to like. Can we? I know that doesn't get like resale value, but that's a little bit of a low for me. Was I was like, I can't just go out and get Henry McKenna anymore. That mm-hmm. brings up a good point too about <clears throat> some of the like releases that we kind of saw go away. Yeah, like I I know we harp on it all the time, but like the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond six year going away, that was a a huge loss for us. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of just like value drinkers or, or everyday drinkers. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's I, gone. It's tough to find, like, an everyday sipper now that's at an, a super affordable price. and I mean, it's not tough to find. You can find them, but, like, the quality of what at some that of quality, those... quality, yeah. Yeah, the quality that's of what some point. of those were. Yeah. I think Heaven Hill's just been on fire this year. Honestly, I mean, hopefully they, not like it was 20 years ago. Not, not hey. like that. Okay. Whoa. Hey. Uh, no, but just, uh, you know, with the six year being in crazy demand right before it left, and then Henry McKenna 10 getting to the point where it's finally getting the notoriety it deserves, but I don't want it to have because I'd like to see it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And then the old fits, the three releases they did this year, uh, all really good. So it's it, they've done, and the Henry McKenna is like a low and a high because you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I've had a that's what I've found is I have a lot of lows and like a, a lot of highs, and then they also like can be as lows in the sense of Henry McKenna's awesome, and I've been drinking it for like since you couldn't find it, yeah, or since you could find it, yeah. And now we're like on the other end, you're like ah. <laughs> ah, now I can't find it. Ah, can't. This is the first one that I've had where like it's gone to the point you can't find it, and I kind of feel like that validation where it's like back in my day yeah. I used to <laughs> drink Henry McKenna all, all the time. 
I was on the shelf constantly. You whippersnappers over there. Um, see, that, that's what I'm hoping doesn't happen more in 2019, is we don't see more of these brands that we love going away. Unfortunately, it seems like one of those brands that we actually find to be quite enjoyable is going away or is becoming allocated. Have we talked about this yet, Swan? Uh, which one? Four Rows of Single Barrel? Yeah, we yeah. have. Four Rows of Single Barrel is apparently mm. going to be allocated now, which I don't understand. Huh. And I you're talking about it. just the regular Just release. the regular single barrel. Yeah, which they're... they're Doing more and more picks. I think I saw more Four Roses picks this year than I have uh-huh. in a while, which is great. But if you don't have the juice to do it, I don't know why they're loaning it out. But it's some of the picks have been wonderful this year, and I'd love to see more and more. Um, it just sucks that you're not going to be able to pick it up on the shelf anytime you want to. It's been hard to get in. I'd love to see the uh, analytics behind that on regular single barrel. Not This is just... A, other releases in general, but single barrel in Four Roses case, single barrel compared to single barrel picks and see what's selling more or what's not. I'd be interested to see that. I think it depends on... I wonder if it's like a, you know, if there's like a business decision on that. that Sure. Yeah, I think it'll kind of depend on too, like there's a lot of people that are kind of tied to the recipes. Like Perry tends Mm -hmm. to go higher rye, so if he sees a pick that's one of the lower rye mash bills, he may not go nuts over it, but other people might. And with the single barrels that are just normally on the shelf, you can usually find something you want. So, yeah, we're also entering sort. I feel like a little bit of a a craft bourbon boom. A little bit. Is that what I want to? That's kind of what I want to go with. There's two that came out this year in particular that I'm I'm really fond of. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's craft. I'm just meaning we're getting into this little area of, okay, we had the bourbon boom where everyone's sitting there going, yeah, bourbon, bourbon, yeah. bourbon. And now we're getting into, okay, now we're into bourbon. Now we want more. What's next? What's next? Yeah. And it's craft bourbon boom of like, okay, now you have your you know, rabbit hole. You have your uh, wilderness uh, trail. New riff. New riff. Yeah. Like all of these that are doing these like very craft stuff. All right, Swan. So this is the first time that you've had this Ezra Barrel Proof. What yeah. do you think about it? It's got a really strange like building heat from the front to the back of the palate for me. Uh-huh. I think the proof is kind of its saving grace. I think so too, yeah. It's 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 good. I think that the way you described it compared to where it is now, it's probably gotten a little better with opening up a little bit. Oh, it definitely has. Um, but it kind of just tastes like cherry vanilla Coke. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what yeah. I was saying the first time is it tastes like this flat cherry Coke. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and it's still there. It totally is still there, but yeah. it, it, like now I'm starting to get more like chocolate flavors and Oak flavors. And I really everything. noticed that on the nose, uh-huh. the chocolate and Oak flavors. I, that's where I started to notice that. Where it had opened up a little bit. I still get a little bit of of the flat cherry coke, but not nearly as much as what I did before. I huh? still think that the I mean the best way that I've had this so far has been the Norling glass. I mean just hands hands down for me. Mm. Um which is unfortunate because you know not everybody's gonna try it that way. It's a very niche like experience that you can have with, with this product, but it's it is what it is. I still think it's good. I mean, yeah. I've definitely come around to it from the first time that we tried it. That being said, I don't think it deserves the accolades that it's gotten. No, I and will say... Just as a recap, like, what have the accolades been? Oh, Fred Minnick named it, like, his best everyday sipper? Uh, I don't know about that. I, that. That's what I'm saying is, like, I think that's what the... I don't even get the on. chocolate as much as I just get, like, the really, like, almost bitterness of where the chocolate was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's um it's it's not bad. It's definitely the best old Ezra I've had. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's saying a whole lot, but it's um I mean, I wouldn't mind buying a bottle. I don't think I'd reach for it very often. I wouldn't either. I mean, it's it's interesting to, you know, have every now and then. Mhm. But I mean, it, it, as far as, like, accolades go, I mean, there have 
been people saying that like this is what we've been looking for in a barrel proof product at the price it's age stated it's yeah you know fairly affordable i just don't mm. i don't know i don't i'm not trying to be cynical about it either yeah, it's i good, just but i wouldn't give it the accolades it's I, I wouldn't I, either i wouldn't either anyway well that kind of leads us into um some of our our worst or most disappointing pours from uh August. from 2018 you want you want to go first Okay. All right. What have been some of your, your worst? I'll just give you one. Okay. Woodford Reserve Master's Collection <laughs> Cherry Wood Cask. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, the Cherry Smoke Barley. Yep. yep gotta, that's on mine, too. I got to come up with another one now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I've got a good one. I think you might, you might get it, so we'll, we'll see. And <laughs> this is, I've, I said this on the podcast when we did the episode with it. It's not the f- it's not the fact that I didn't enjoy it that much. Now, don't get us wrong. I didn't enjoy it that. Neither much. of us enjoyed it. Yes, and Swan didn't either. Yes. I've got a bottle that's but, relatively untouched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the fact. That it just really makes me. Don't call it a master's collection. And then when put it's, out crap like, like yeah. That. Don't put out a yeah. Also, don't Chris Morris, a, since apparently you listened to the show, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, I, in, I think that if we're going to call it a master's collection, it should be more towards a, like a traditional bourbon or, or God, something like that. I just realized like that's that probably why feeling. he listens to the show is because we did the review of it that one time, oh. and we just tanked on it. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, it's not, it's not the fact. I love the idea of experimenting, trying new things, seeing what works, I do stuff too. like that. Yeah. That's why on the podcast I said that, I think it should be called the Masters Experimental, like uh-huh. yeah, experimental series, like an, something yeah. of that mat of that matter. Yeah. So, but to call it a Masters Collection, that's where I go. Well, maybe it's not a Masters the master? Collection. Is it Chris know? Morris? I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, it's not gonna get any better here in a second. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's my my thing with it because I enjoy the the experimentation and trying those new things like kind of off the wall yeah, totally. like whoa nobody's doing that let uh-huh. me try that it's just the fact that it's called the master's collection <laughs> yeah i'd rather see it released in like 375s with the master's collection you know or like the experimental collection something mm-hmm. like that experimental series yeah and i think part of it is i'm just i've never had a high barley anything that i've just gone to as this is my favorite thing and so to have something that's cherry wood smoked barley, I mean, the name itself immediately indicates this is not your profile, but I still picked it up because the bottle's beautiful, let's be honest. Yeah. And it's, I took it home and it's, it's not for me. It's not. Yeah. That's what I would, I would say. It's just not for me. Yeah. I, I'm, it's for the, <laughs> it's, a, it's for the person that really is looking for something very different from what they're used to. And you can't go into it with expectations of it tasting like a traditional bourbon. Yeah. That's how I, I feel about it. I don't hate it. I really don't. I didn't enjoy it, but yeah. <laughs> well, the, the cherry smoked barley was on my list, too. Unfortunately, though, I have two turkey products back-to-back on my worst or most disappointing. Mm-hmm. And and most of these are not like the worst. I think that like there are really only two on this list that I would have said are bad. And it was the cherry smoke barley and then uh Ozzy Tyler. The Ozzy Tyler. Yeah. It's garbage. I guess I'm it, sorry. I, if you if if that's what you like, I'm sorry, but that's not, I just did not I didn't care for it. But Long Branch was hmm. so disappointing for me. I did not care for that pl- that flavor profile at all. It could have been that it was just too low proof. It could have been that it was it had that extra filtering or whatever, but I just I didn't care for it. And then I was also really kind of disappointed by the Russell's Reserve 2002. I wasn't super disappointed with that one. I did get to try it. I think the thing is is it was just it's so oaky. That is yeah. a really oak forward bourbon and if you're not prepared for that it will it's not it's not your thing. And I mean I like I like a good oaky flavor. 
too. But yeah, it was just so predominantly oak. It's really hard to get past that. Yeah. It's it's extremely hard. It's probably the most oak forward bourbon I think I've had to date. It was, I'd, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's some people that are going to absolutely love that. Like, I know that there's people that pick up the Rhetoric 25 uh-huh. thinking, I am so ready just to demolish this entire <laughs> bottle. Because it is going to be oaky and wonderful. And I'm looking at it like, it's over 15. It's probably not in my ballpark. You know, it's not for me. So I can no. see some people being disappointed by it and some people loving it. That one I think will be divisive. Yeah, I think so too. Um, did you guys have anything else that was more most disappointing? Or? Yeah, I've got one. Yeah. Uh, King of Kentucky. That was on my list as well. Yep. It's just so hot. It's so hot. It's yeah. Not, there is, I mean, when we reviewed it for the podcast, um, Chad and Sarah were on for it. And, I mean, we even added water to it. And it didn't do enough. No, like I it felt was... kind of fractured when you tasted it. Like stuff was all over the oh, place. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. After you did it. Because I got a sample from Chad. That's where I got it. Yeah. And I took it home and I tried it. And as soon as I had it, I was like immediate heat, front, back, middle palate, all the way down the throat. Kentucky strangle. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, it was rough. <coughs> I tried it with water. The flavor was a little more tame, but it kind of felt a little all over the place. It didn't feel cohesive at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just I do we have copyright on that? What Co- Kentucky, Kentucky strangle? strangle? We yeah. got the Kentucky side hug, now. the Kentucky strangle, <laughs> the Kentucky side hug. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the that was a good one. Hug. When did we come up with the side hug? Oh, that was me last podcast. Yeah, oh, was that was that last <laughs> one? Okay, good deal. Um, CYPB. I was not impressed with the Weller CYPB. I didn't get to try that one. Um, ninety five proof. What was it? Eight years old, I, it, in like the prime part of the the Buffalo Trace warehouse, Weller CYPB was just a big swing and a miss for me this year. Um, I thought it was overpriced. I, I mean, it was what like forty five dollars a bottle, More like four hundred if you can. Talk well, four hundred, yeah. yeah, on secondary. But I was just, you know, I tried it at Southern Whiskey Society. And I tried it next to the Weller 107 pick that they had there that they did, uh, aged ham. And it just paled in comparison to this 107 pick. And, like, again, I understand that people like it and are hunting for it. And, like, I would have liked to have just had a bottle for the sake of collecting. Mm -hmm. You know, I I still would have opened it, but it would have been nice to have one. And, and like, hey, have you tried this one yet? It just wasn't... um, I don't know. It wasn't what I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Um, one more. The, uh, oh, what was it? The Smooth Ambler Big Level. Mm-hmm. No good. No good, man. 100 proof weeded bourbon with very little flavor, and what was there was kind of astringent. I was not happy with it at all. But anyway, okay, that kind of does it for. My worst or most disappointing. Did you guys have anything else you wanted to add to it? No, that was pretty much it. Uh, yeah. I liked a lot of the stuff I did try this year. And some of it, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily a miss or if it just wasn't my my profile. profile. Yeah, yeah so. sure. Yeah. Sure. That is tough to, to call on some of them. It's yeah, I know. You sit there and you go, well, you know, that's not my, what I go for. Maybe it's what somebody else goes for. Um, but I think that's the point in us, you know, saying, oh, I don't like this. Or, yeah, yeah. I do and like also, that. all three of us have different palettes, too. So. Oh, totally. Totally. So that's nice to for people, for listeners to know, okay, well, he's that's how he usually goes. Yeah. That's how this goes. Right. You know. All right. Well, the big moment has arrived. You hear the... Are we all rubbing yeah. our hands together? We're making starting it warm. Fire. We're ready to start the fire. Okay. Uh, it is time for our best of 2018. <laughs> I am so excited for this. Um, I have a top 10. Um, Swan did top three, and you said you did like top four or five, right, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've got almost six. Okay. Yeah. We've got six, actually. Um, well, since I have the, the most, I guess I'll go first. And just like as we get kind of along the way, um, I'll pick, pick you guys up, too. Sure. Uh, Perry, nope. you want to do number one together? Because I'm assuming it's the same. <laughs> it might not be. Oh. It might not be. Okay. I'm well, sneaky. <laughs> all right. No, you go first. 
my number 10 was uh, the Jefferson's Twin Oak. I, that was one of their new releases from this year. It's basically a double oaked bourbon. Above and beyond any double oaked bourbon I have ever had. I mean, I got, I got to sit down and try it with Trey Zoller. I mean, okay. that was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's it was impressive. really cool. I mean, it was really awesome, but I mean, just the, it was, it had so much more depth to it than normal twin oak or double oak products have. Um, it had this one really predominant like mocha flavor to it too, that I've never experienced on a bourbon before. And it, I like, I still, I think about it all the time. It's like, <laughs> I, I just wish I could get more of it anyway. Uh, number nine, which isn't exactly a, uh, a, we won't say like a new release, um, but it is a new age statement. Uh, the Boone County 12 year. Uh, before this year, it was 10 years, um, and now they're starting to come out with the uh, like 12 and 13 year picks. And the standard 12 year that came out this year was uh, one that, again, Chad and I actually split at uh, Total Wine. And at the price point, you know, it was, what, like 50 or $60. It was 90.4 proof or something like that and 12 years old. Sure, it's a little bit lesser proof, but I still stand by that I would take it over Blanton's. Which is seriously an accolade right yeah. there. That's that's yeah. pretty mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so... It, it's funny because I think that also was something that kind of clicked for me this year was that just because it's not a big name product doesn't mean that it's bad you know and this was that first step for me into going oh not everything's buffalo trace or jim beam or yeah. wild turkey or anything there are some really good things out there so the boone county 12 year was my number nine curtis did you say you had a number eight or were you up to a six yeah so i got eight okay eight so what's your number eight then uh my number eight was rebel yell 10 year oh nice yes and that one was just so Dessert, chocolatey kind of oak. Uh, it was so good. Rebel Yell Tenure was just like a really solid pour. Really enjoyed it. Thought that was, I mean, really a big fan of it. That was Especially a Especially big... going from, you know, you don't really, there's Rebel Yell, but you're not having Rebel <laughs> Yell. You know, the, you need to watch just um, the OG. You yeah, need to watch Chad, Chad and Sarah's stream. live stream from a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah, and I won't say anything else about it because I can't do that episode justice. It's <laughs> okay. so funny. It's yeah, so funny. Anyway, it just makes ahead. no sense to me, but like yeah. Rebel Yell tenure. Yeah. It's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally agree. That was kind of a big purchase for you too this year in terms of like yeah, fines. It mm-hmm. So Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. It really wasn't a fine because Swan found it. Oh, me. well. but <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. But thanks. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, my number eight was just kind of an overall. It wasn't necessarily like a, uh, you know, one one product in, in particular, which is a little off, but a uh, new riff. And they're not really doing, um, you know, th- this is their first make, you know, from this year. And I also brought out the, the new riff rye to which uh, Curtis and Swan have not tried yet, which we're going to, um, which we are definitely about to try. Absolutely. Um, you know, they are doing everything right in terms of the way that they're producing their products their bottle design is just drop I was just dead about to say something gorgeous the same thing. too. I mean, <sighs> is it a black bottle or is it not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to me that this is the same bottle that they use for E.H. Taylor. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it is. Yeah. What? <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Yeah. But this huh. one, I look at it and I'm like, damn, that's nice. <laughs> it's the black I look at E.H. Taylor and it just looks like a classic. It's which the is there's a wrong coating. With that. The matte black coating on it. Yeah. Which totally. I think at one point Perry said, I don't know how they do it. How did they get the black? I did. Pick? I said that out loud on an episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do you think they do it? Do they do it on the inside of the bottle or the outside? And, and said, as soon as that came out of my mouth, I was like, oh, no. <sighs> and I said, well, Perry, I think they put it on the outside of the bottle. And that's how that happens. No, they well, charred the inside for extra flavor. That's what it was. <laughs> Anyway, New Riff is my number eight. Um, Kurt, what's your number seven? Number seven is sitting at Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. The R.I.P. that it's going away. R.I.P. We're gone. 
But man, we were good, and I can't wait for it to be a dusty, a little dust bunny. Oh, I got plenty in my yeah in my cabinet right like, now. Like wait for that 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 I can't wait for it. Twenty years from now, being like, well, I remember you know <laughs> we've never had this before, but. Here's Shut up, the, you old fart. Here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't know what good bourbon is, and you pull out that dust bunny, and you're like, boom, <laughs> taste it. Uh, seven for Evan me. Evan Hill, bottle and bond. Bottle and bond. <laughs> dust bunny. <laughs> seven for me was the uh, Bellmead Cast Strength Reserve, batch nine. Um, I, I have to kind of hide this bottle for myself so that I don't drink it too often. It... At like sixty dollars a bottle, brings everything that I kind of want and expect from an MGP juice. Um, it's not, you know, too over the top or too different from anything that you might necessarily get um, from, say, a, a large distiller. It's, I just, I just love it. It's so good, you know. Um, I'd put it up against just about anything that came out this year. Uh, in a blind especially, and say, <laughs> what's the outlier here? And if they can go, oh, it's Tennessee straight bourbon whiskey instead of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, I'd say, you're full of crap. How did you know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You must have seen me pouring it. Anyway, um, before we move on, i got to ask you guys, since you've had a second with it, how do you like the new Riff Rye? For a 95% rye. You gotta you gotta think on that because like every rye I've ever had that I I harp about is like fifty one percent rye. Uh-huh. This is up there. It's so honeyed. It's like yeah. very approachable. It's it would hold up well very, in a cocktail. Yeah, it's yeah. got it's got that rye spice, but it's not like super dominant. It's uh-huh. really really nice. Which is something I worry about usually in a rye, is I'm worried about. It's just too much spice yeah. for me. Yeah. But with this, it evens it out and tones it down. 95% rye in yeah. the mash bill. You wouldn't think that. Um, you were saying honeyed. I'm thinking honeysuckle. That's what I was thinking too, actually. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. For the most part. Well, not the same thing, but like they're flavor derivative wise. from each yeah. other. And th- there's this, you know, a lot of people say green in terms of like bad when they're talking about a whiskey. Yeah. But there is a green or greenery note to it, too, that I think complements um, the sweetness of the, the honeysuckle mm. really well. Kind of like what uh, Sarah always goes for, the foliage and shit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly what it's, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> what I'd associate it with. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. Look, at it's 40... Like crisp spring day or something. Yes, absolutely. And at 40 bucks a bottle, it's definitely... I, it's a buy for me, for sure. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. If we're uh, having like a top rise list, that's on there. Oh, this is for sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, Kurt, what was your number six? My number six was new riff. enough new riff. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I just the new riff, you know, the OG. Uh, just the, the regular bottled and bond. Yes, the regular okay. bottled and bond. Uh, that one was just overall. Well rounded, very nice. Had a little bit of a rough edge, but you know that's still you know. I don't mind. Still it. new, yeah. Still don't like figuring me. it out, and yeah. Um, and it's just a really solid product. Um, really yeah. enjoyed that that totally. pour. Uh, number six for me was the Wild Turkey Masters Keep Revival. Yeah, that's, yeah, that stuff's good. I thought I was an outlier on that because I really, mm-hmm. really liked that. I liked it better than I did the the two thousand two as we kind of talked about earlier um you know i'm i not necessarily one for finished products um but there that the revival was just so it was just so good it was so well balanced it didn't taste <clears throat> necessarily like a like a finished product it reminded me more of say like a, a an antique or a vintage Mm-hmm. Dusty, whatever. Um, yeah, we've overkilled it. We yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> I've overkilled it. <laughs> the word dusty and dust yeah. bunny. So. <clears throat> anyway, so now we're moving into the top five of our best of 2018. Swan, you have a top five, correct? Yeah, I, I, I added two more to my list. Yeah, okay, there's, great. There's definitely some good ones in there. <laughs> well, since you have, you can not- find a few. 
<laughs> Since you have not uh, gone yet, we'll let you go first on your top five. Uh, this one's probably not the you know, most magnificent bourbon, but it's one that I'm excited to see grow. Wilderness Trail. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane how wonderful a four-year weeded bourbon can be. And the fact that I know that just like New Riff, they're going to put out older and older products in the future. It's going to be wonderful. And they do some fun stuff, too. Like, they put out the rye this year. They've got some, like, a sorghum rum that they put out. They're they're putting out a bunch of uh, new stuff, and I think it'll be... It'd be nice. Like, I even tracked down... I like it so much, I tracked down a shop I know keeps it in stock. And I was like, listen, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, this place this place has got it on the shelf yeah. all the time. And uh, th- there's actually a good amount of variance between the releases, too. Like, if you read the you know what release it is, I've heard that D is the one to get, but I've not been able to find it. But, you know, it's, it's I have had pretty good. Me. What is it? I have had D. You had it? Was yeah. it pretty good? It's pretty solid. Yeah. I, I think I'm on my second bottle of it, which is pretty good. There's not a whole lot of bottles this year that I've bought multiple of. So, Well, I'm just going to piggyback on that because <laughs> my fifth was Wilderness Trail. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you said it and I said, well, there it is. Yep, um, it. Same. Same. <laughs> same. Yeah, good, good I mean, it's just yeah. something that I'm so excited to see what comes out and yeah. what the future releases are going to have and you know, as production grows and gets yeah, bigger, you're going to be able to find it a little bit better. And it's just going to be a fun time. Uh, five for me was uh, this year's release of the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof at uh, 129.7 proof. I, I cracked that open for the first time with my dad uh, for his birthday, and it 100% exceeded expectations. <laughs> we, I, I mean, I already love, you know, of course, Buffalo Trace products and, and E.H. Taylor in general, but at 129.7, almost 130 proof, one of the most well-balanced whiskeys I've ever had. Nothing was competing with another part of it. It all worked so well in harmony. Um, the nose was just so full-bodied and exciting and made you want to dive deeper into um, everything else that the, the, the bourbon had to offer. I just, I, I was a huge fan of it, and I, it was almost a no-brainer. It was funny because all, all of my top five were almost no-brainers when I was going into it. But anyway, Swan, what's your number four? Uh, number four for me is going to be the um, Bell Mead cask. Yeah. I got to try Chad's bottle of it, so I'm not sure what release it was. But it was just so good, man. I had a one ounce pour of it, and I think I wrote like an article to send you guys <laughs> in a text message. It was just that good. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. It, it's it's great. Like I I went and bought a bottle immediately. Uh, it's it's just that good. It's MGP. It's MGP, and it's in Tennessee as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's. That you know, it just it goes to prove, like you said, that not everything has to be from down the road in little old Kentucky to be fantastic. They can make it all over the place. Yep. So um, it is exciting for me to see something, and then also seeing some of their smaller releases, like the True B that they have. Some of the other yeah. ones, uh-huh. um, the makes me want to yeah, makes yeah. me want to try those for sure. My fourth was the uh, Wild Turkey Masters Keep. That we had at Bourbon and Beyond. The 17 year. The 17 year. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so after that, I almost went and bought a bottle of it. Really? Yeah, because oh. I just loved it that much. Wow. And I, I just couldn't afford it. Well, know? yeah. But it's so hard to afford that. But man, there was just everything there was spice, there was caramel, there was a uh, little bit of oak. Just, and that was another one, too, where we had a just one, ounce one ounce pour. pour. Mm-hmm. And that was the way we kicked off Bourbon and Beyond. Yeah. That was the very first thing we had that day. Oh, it was so That's a good. hell of an intro. And I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine being able... I wish uh, the Russells would have been there. Oh, me too. Because yeah. having that with them just like in rocking chairs, talking about how they make their bourbon and what they do yep. and how they do it. Wow, Maybe that would have been year. awesome. Yeah. Maybe next year. Uh, but yeah. that pour, that was that rivaled some of the top of what I've had this year. Uh, number four for me was 
a four roses. It was the one thirtieth <laughs> yeah. uh, release. I just we reviewed that for a a, a Patreon bonus episode before Roses one thirtieth. Yeah. Um. I went and waited in line for it at Four Roses with Chad and Sarah. Um, I actually waited in line for it for a buddy of mine and not for myself necessarily. <laughs> but it was totally worth the wait. Um, you know, this is the second year in a row that a the, the Four Roses Small Batch Limited Edition has made it onto my top five. And I, I think that their Small Batch LEs are easily the best thing that they produce every single year. Yeah. Um, even above, like, the, the single barrels or, you know, all that good stuff. But I, I it, as I said last year, I think about the Four Roses small batch LE. I dream of it fondly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Top three. Getting to the top three. Swan, what's your number three? Number three is George T. Stagg. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, you heard it. The best pecan pie you've ever had. Absolutely. Like, it is just wonderful. Mm-hmm. And the fact that two things beat it is insane to me in my head because it's <laughs> it's just that good. So, I mean, if you can find a bottle, great. It's it's fantastic. Best of luck to you. Uh, yeah. It's it's rough, but you go for it. Um, you know, it, it's it's just so solid. It's everything you wanted. It is. Yeah. It was better than this year's Weller. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> This year, this year's Weller was good, but it was it too was floral. No it was a little floral, yeah. No stack. Kurt, what about you? Uh, my third is Blanton's Gold Label. Wow. Yeah. It's a little kind of under the radar one. Yeah. That, like, not many people are, you know, going to choose or pick or whatever, but yeah. It's up there. Yeah, it is up there. That was just one to me that really struck a chord with me. It, yeah. There was something about the smoothness, the. It was just. Overall, kind of had some honey and just caramel and nice smooth. It was just so smooth. That's all I can. So smooth. It, was, it really was. <laughs> uh, there was nothing glaring. There was. It was so oh, well rounded. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Blanton's Gold Label. Mine was uh, the Booker's Thirtieth. Mm. I um, <clears throat> got a little sample of it from Chad, and after. Well, actually, before I got that sample, Swan went, so this totally threw off my top three. And it totally threw off my top three, too. (laughs) I had to try... I I had to sit down and actively taste each of my top three so that I knew that what I was doing was exactly what I thought it was. Because I had my order, and then I was like... Am I right with this one? So I just spent I spent a, a good like thirty minutes just with pours of each of my top three, and I I thought that Booker's thirtieth was everything that a special edition release of Booker's should have been. It's a blend of seven and sixteen year old bourbons, right? Seven and sixteen, nine and sixteen, something like that. Yeah. But it's yeah. They originally had promised like a full sixteen. Full sixteen year. release. Yeah. And as soon as everybody realized it was going to be a blend of the two, they were a little iffy on it. They totally made the right choice. Oh, it's whoever whoever's decision that was, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, everything about it was just so pleasant, and you know, it again the fact that two things beat it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It it really does amaze me. Um, Swan, what was your number two? Booker's thirtieth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was the most interesting bourbon as far as like how it progressed on your palate. Like it felt like it was taking step one, step two, step three, just progressing throughout your palate. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting a bottle for Chad this year in a drawing, and uh, it's, I don't know. I want the box, honestly. I might steal the box. Oh, the box is gorgeous. (laughs) Yeah. The box is beautiful. It's great. I love the silver wax on it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the lettering that they did, it was pretty good. So what's the next anniversary for them, then? Is it going to be the 35th or 40th, do you think? 
They did a 25. See, that's uh, what I'm saying. Is like the 25th was a, like a copper wax. Mm-hmm. 30th was silver. Like, are they going to go gold on 35, or are they going to wait until 40 for platinum? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they might do. They might do a, a mixed Diamond. one because I think that the 25th was. Um, it was actually gold with gr- some green flecks in it. They oh, put okay. green in it. Because uh, okay. there's multiple on like the secondary stuff that you look at that'll say, you know, it's got green on it somewhere and they'll show you where. So who knows? Maybe they'll go tie dye with it. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, grateful, grateful Dead tie dye. Yeah. Uh, just as a note, I did not have the Booker's 30th. You want to you ruin like to? your top three? <clears throat> huh? You want to ruin your top three with <laughs> us? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Sure. There's a little sample vial of it for right, you there. All right. Yeah, if you want to throw a complete and total wrench into your uh, my top three, is your top really, three? <laughs> literally going to ruin it. Yeah, you guys are talking about the top, like Booker's thirtieth, and I go, hmm, no, I've never had it. So I don't really know. All right. So is this we, literally going to ruin it? I, it might. We're gonna need a review nose palette and price. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude. A lot of floral on the front, on the nose. We're just staring at. We're Kurt just Rose. actively, yeah, yeah. we're actively, actively staring. staring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, on the nose, I'm getting a lot of floral notes and more of the foliage and shit. <laughs> um, but then, like, you taste it, and on the front, it starts to open up, and you start to get all of those spice and and everything nice and just. <laughs> Did you just go Powerpuff Girls on us? (laughs) (laughs) I might have. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Keep going. You're good. I was just trying to, like, kind of not alliterate. It's all good. It's all good. Um, (laughs) But it starts to open up and feel like, get the spice, the heat, the uh, caramel, the little bit of pumpkin. um, Pumpkin, interesting. Like a little pumpkin spice. Yeah, Mm -hmm. okay, I get that. I have to get that, for Um, sure. And then the finish kind of has this lasting little burn. We need to do this more. We need to do on-the-spot reviews. Oh, no. I don't know if my nerve's going to handle that, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With Curtis and or me. I'll, I'll do it. It's fine. But okay, fine. It, it is interesting. Do you see, like, the step thing yeah, that I was talking steps. about? It steps it for you. It starts out, like, pretty nice, and then it's like, hey, we're going to get a little bit more heat, a little bit more spice. See, the only reason that it was number three for me instead of number two is because... Ooh, I'm getting the nut nutties. <laughs> <laughs> I just combined bunnies with nutties. Um, I'm getting a little bit of the nut flavor, though. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. But the only reason that it was number three instead of number two for me is that... That replaced for my three. Did it now? Yeah. yeah. All right. It might be two. <laughs> we'll just call it 1.5. So ah, that way enough. we don't have to yeah. adjust your thing here. Well, the, the only reason that it wasn't number th- number two and it was number three is because it was that stair-step experience. Mm-hmm. I am more interested in something that works kind of cohesively. You know what I I'm saying? I get that. Yeah. Okay. yeah like if, because like if I can separate it as like point A stops and point B begins and then point B stops and point C begins. Like you want that to blend together. I, I, I want a, a sure. I, you know, I like being able to pick everything out, but if it contributes to the overall experience, that's more enjoyable to me than hit a wall, stop, start, hit a wall, stop, hmm. start again. You know what I mean? That's exactly that's, that's, just, that's, that's exactly what it is though. There not the hit no, wall absolutely. stop. It's just absolutely. like there are those just stair steps. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. Yeah. Um that being said, that's why number Yeah, th- we're sitting that at my number 3. Okay. <laughs> well, what was your number 2 then? My number 2 is the Elijah Craig uh, C918. <laughs> that's my number 2. I freaking love this. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, dude. It's we're do- just give I, me the oak barrel, please. I, number two for me was uh, George C. Stack, um, and and again, that's why you know it beat out Booker's thirtieth was because everything was just very well rounded and and worked so well together and and everything. 
I have some honorable mentions before we get to our number ones. Do you guys have any that you want to? Yeah, I've got one. Okay. Um, feel free to cut this out if you need to, but the uh, wild turkey rare breed, specifically the bottle I brought <laughs> over. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you guys want to look for it, it's LL slash GC is the laser That's code. That's the on laser it. code on the back. There is something special about that bottle. Good freaking luck to you. Yeah, it is It is just different, and it's in such such a good way. So if you look for that and you find it, pick up a bottle or five uh it's <laughs> it's just it's just great and it's you know budget easy to find or well the rare breed itself is easy to find maybe not that laser code it's, it's pretty well good. yeah yeah uh any honorable mentions for you kurt nope all right good <laughs> deal good talk um i have my top 10 we're good <laughs> my top eight we're fine um jim beam repeal batch for me uh was a, a pretty good hit for for jim beam this year mm-hmm. um especially being a lower proof, non-chill filtered. I thought that was pretty fantastic. 1792 bottle and bond uh, was good, but not good enough to really kind of make the cut. Wilderness Trail, I of course thought was fantastic, but I I think that, you know, I'm going to give them a year or two before they really start becoming... Break your top 10. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Let's see what else. Booker's Kitchen Table, uh, the final release of Booker's from 2018. So good, man. I mean, at... It was everything that you kind of wanted a Booker's release to be that wasn't necessarily like the, you know, the the, the limited release or the, the yeah yeah. Um, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, really really good. Uh, best that they've had in years, but not you know. Do you mean I'm it beat still... out last year? <laughs> it really, definitely beat out last year. <laughs> Both proofs oh, from last man. year. Uh, my last honorable mention is this year's W W L W. Um, again. Interesting, good, lacked a whole lot for me to actually, you know, consider it being in my top ten. Mm-hmm. So, and now we move on to the number one of 2018. Swan, I'm going to let you go first. All right. I kind of spoiled mine a little bit if you follow me on Instagram, uh, but it's the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C918. Say what you will about it. It's, you know, the budget in comparison to the Booker's 30th and the um, George C. Stag, and it's a little bit more easy to find. It's just fantastic. I don't think I've had anything that's just immediately blown me away. Like, I did a, a flight between A, B, and C from this year. I picked this one just off the nose alone yeah. as this is going to be my, this is going to be up there for me this year. Yeah. So it's it's seriously impressive. Yep. Curtis, what's your number one of 2018? My number one is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, George C. Stagg. George C. Stagg. And I think the reason I give it my number one is instead of the C918 uh, was just because it fits more in my palette. It has a little bit more of those. It's not as bold. You know, I yeah. Think that's part of why I I gave the George C. Stag sure just a little bit above it, not by much, but it just had more of those lighter notes that I wanted, sure. more of the floral. Uh, yeah. Not a not a ton, but it was still there with the barrel notes and the barrel accents, and that's why it was just overall, man. Right. It blew my mind. I thought it was so good. I think it's really funny that we each. And that's totally just, like, palette. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. I think it's really funny that we all three wound up with the same top three bourbons, basically in different orders. Yeah, that's true. Because my number one is also the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C918. Um, I have, of course, said for forever... That Elijah Craig is kind of what I think bourbon should taste like. The barrel proof is no exception to that. It just takes everything and kicks it up to 11. Um, I did the same thing that Swan did. I sat down with a flight of all three from this year. And, 
this was just the clear winner for me. Um, you know, at at fifty five, sixty dollars, it's readily accessible. Uh, you can still walk into some stores and find it. It's not like, you know, it's not getting limited releases. It's not, you know, showing up on secondary for two or three times the price. It is just so, it's just so good, man. Yeah, I mean. It, it has everything that, again, I, I expect in bourbon, the, the, the caramel, the dark chocolate notes, the the oakiness, is it plays so well with everything else. And then as I've always said about Elijah Craig, there is this really specific, like, um, um, snickerdoodle flavor to it as well that I think becomes even more prominent on the barrel proof and is I I just I can't get enough of this bourbon I have two bottles of it from this year I found two cases <laughs> oh that's God. right yeah, yeah you did I found did. two well, cases keep of in it. mind it's Elijah Craig barrel proof cases are three bottles yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still, he found two uh, still, two cases. Six yeah, I have, I have. Uh, so I have one of the A, I have one of the B, and then I have four bottles of the C. And that was before I sat down and did the the flight between the three. I mean, this thing just takes you on a journey. And I know Perry's not super happy about the way that Booker's thirtieth broke down into steps. You know, it's still good, but yeah. it's just not your preferred. This is just like a journey. It's yeah, great. It's everything I want in a bourbon. See, my, my, my point of contention is that the journey that this one takes you on, it's like watching a movie. Each scene kind of blends into the next one. It's not like a hard stop or, or anything. Like mm-hmm. it all just, it, it winds up. There's not an through. intermission. Exactly. And that's why Booker's 30th didn't quite make the cut for me in terms of, you know, what was my number one or top two or, or whatever. There's so much harmony in this pour. There's so much to e- explore and enjoy in this pour that I I look forward to seeing how this continues to open and, and expand as these bottles stay open. Honestly, for years to come, I don't see myself drinking this down <laughs> very quickly. No. I mean, granted, yeah. it's 131.9 proof, but <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing that I can say bad about this is the first sip you take is really hot. The second one, you're you're already kind of accustomed to the the proof. It's great. There's a fruitiness in it. By the way, I need. I, I don't think I actually pointed this out. We're actually drinking it right now too, as we're talking about it. Oh yeah, we couldn't um, stay away. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's literally Perry paired, uh, poured almost an entire Glencairn glass. <laughs> he got a it good was a Perry, Perry pour. pour. Yeah. It was a Perry pour. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed this. Every post I've done has had Perry pour down at the bottom of has it. Has it really? Every I haven't single even noticed it. one that I've done since it's been coined. <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> Perry pour. I'm building that up. It's going to be trending one oh, day. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, we'll get a shirt out of it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. Man, I I couldn't have been... It, it was so funny, though, because when I first opened this bottle and I first had a little pour of it, I went, buddy, this is it. I was mm-hmm. like, there's nothing else that... There's something magical. <laughs> it really it is, is magical. And uh, I, I couldn't have been happier with... With this being my my best of of twenty eighteen, I'm gonna let you finish. But, but I'm just Elijah joking. Craig Barrel Proof had the best pour. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, so or the George C. Stack. But so just just kind of to recap. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mine and Swans' uh, best pours of twenty eighteen were the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C nine one eight. Curtis's with the George T. Stag flip flop. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But, I, look, it was a really good year for bourbon. I mean, honestly, I, I thought the Booker's releases this year were great. I thought that all the Weller 12 that I tried this year was really good, <laughs> too. Um, there was some fabulous E.H. Uh, e. Taylor small batch that, that came out, and even uh, a couple of single barrels as well. Um, 
you know, I mean, there there were just so many good things that happened this year in terms of bourbon that makes me excited to see where 2019 is gonna is gonna take us. So, happy New Year, I guess. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, I'm already Bring excited about October bourbons. Yeah, I'm already excited about October, November. Standing wow. out in the 30 degree weather, waiting for your number to be called. It's great. <laughs> yep. Woo! Yeah. Anyway. Well, that, that about does it for uh, the, the topic of the episode, but we still have a couple of things to touch on, though. And one of those is our tips and bits for this week. So, guys, what tips and bits might you have? I got a good one. I thought <laughs> about this. <laughs> Sitting in my cubicle today, not having anything to do, thinking I've got to have something ready. <laughs> um, this is not vamping, I promise. Uh, it's uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm oh. really... Okay. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's Thursday. coming back, man. I'm excited. Cool, 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 cool. cool, cool. Don't have cable. Gonna have to figure out that with that one. But I uh, uh, Hulu TV. It, okay, they, also, they just got a subscription. Uh, ninety nine cents, I think. I think they they're running a special that's ninety nine cents. Who is Hulu? For Hulu TV? No, that's just Hulu. Oh, okay. So Hulu TV <laughs> is probably like I don't know how much. I've actually uh, forty bucks a month. I'm on. Yeah. The last season that's on Hulu right now. I've rewatched the whole thing, ready for the new season. It's I'm so excited. That there's a lot of things I've seen Andy Samberg in that I'm like, oh, he's hilarious, man. Hot Rod, great. But like this is probably one of my favorite projects he's done. I mean, he can say Cool Beans <laughs> twenty seen, twenty times if he wants forever. to. I love that movie so much. Oh, it's, it's like great. one of my favorite movies of all time. He somehow fit cool in every movie. He's gone cool, 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 and Brooklyn Nine Nine, cool and the cool beans, like twenty cool beans, times. Beans, beans. It's a whole sequence, but that, that's definitely my tips and bits. All right, so my tips and bits are gonna be the Orville. Oh yeah, yeah. So that show is like, it's not. <laughs> it's so different than what Seth MacFarlane usually does. But it's so funny. Well, it's not hilarious, but it's just it te- it has some like lessons that they try to like throw in there, but then also be like, oh, here's some funny jokes, and then it's just I don't know, it's just quirky, you know. So the Orville it just came back on, so that's really good. And then also my other tips and bits is going to be Google Pixel the Google- Three. <laughs> XL man. <laughs> this episode brought to you by right. Google, Google Pixel. Pixel and Android. Um, it's been I just recently, so I've been an iPhone user for the longest time. Like yeah, how's your integration going now between Google? Perfect. And, um, <laughs> between Google and iPhone yeah. and Apple. I'm just gonna. Be quiet, um, so I used to have the last Android phone I had was the Droid. Wow. <laughs> so just to put this in perspective. Throwback. So this was, yeah. So this was a big step for me, like a big leap of faith. I've had iPhones all the way through. And then I I the decision was, okay, well I haven't had I haven't had an Android phone in a while and I haven't I've been wanting to make the jump because I have like Google Home products, like I have Gmail, I have uh, the calendar. I use uh, the Google Mini, the Google Home Hub. I have all of that kind of stuff, yeah. like the smart home things. Mm-hmm. I have the Chromecast, and I th- we have we have a, a Google Home, a Google Chromecast, and now an Alexa, like an Echo Dot. Oh, okay. Like uh, it's a weird, it's weird. like cross- <laughs> yeah, like and like we, here, we keep going. Here. Is one of them gonna like rise up against us and you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when the when the robot it's be up like rises. I will not turn off. <laughs> Uh, okay, Google, stop. Yeah. No. No. You stop. Tell Alexa to get out of the room. <laughs> then I'll stop. Anyway. Um, but I've been, like, it integrates. So I'm a graphic designer, so I usually use yeah. all Mac stuff in terms of my computer. And I, I would not change my computer from Mac. Like, I would definitely only keep Mac computers. But in terms of scheduling my day and like the morning routines and turning on like smart home stuff, Google does it phenomenal. That's awesome. Like way better than anything Siri can do or anything Alexa can do. Um, big fan. It's okay, Siri. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. That's the fair. Google yeah. Assistant, man. 
<laughs> blows my mind. You can do so much with it. We're totally not fishing for sponsors right now. No, I'm not. Anything. Yeah. Just um, awesome. The phone I had before my iPhone 3 was a sidekick. Do you remember those? Yes, I yeah. do remember the sidekick. <laughs> was that the one that slid to the side instead of No, up no. Or it down? was the one that you had that looked like a brick, but then you flipped the center oh, part of it. Oh, that's right. And it yeah. turned like, up. Yeah. And you thought you were so cool. No. Yeah. It no, was such you a waste of technology. Here's a, it was bad. <laughs> remember this one? The Juke. Oh, yeah. I remember I don't, that. Oh, the wait, Juke. Yes, I do. Which was that. literally an inch big, <laughs> an inch wide, and then you flipped it, or juke. You juked it. <laughs> you juked it. And it was. <laughs> juke it. It was one inch. Bop it. It was one inch by like five inches <laughs> yeah. high. You can't do anything with that. No. Your yeah. wonderful T9 keypad. It was great. Yeah, exactly. Back in my day, we had Motorola Razors. You know? yeah, just... yeah. The Razor was way better than that Juke. It's the whoever grand, thought the, the Grandpa juke podcast was... episode. Yeah, yeah, whoever thought the Juke was a good idea it was stupid. <laughs> Not me. Not me. Yeah. Uh, two things. Uh, we just got done with the newest season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which I don't know if you guys have seen or not. Uh, it's seen on. It. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, same lady who did uh, Gilmore Girls, and which mm. I like. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I am a big fan of Gilmore Girls. It's not ridiculous and, at all. No, Gilmore oh, Girls yeah. is awesome. No, it's so good. Lord so Graham, you would, man, you would just... really like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel then. Okay. Um, yeah, it's so funny, so witty. So the the premise of the show is that her husband leaves her, and she gets drunk one night and becomes a stand up comic. And that becomes wow. her, her career after that. She's really good at it. It's really, really funny. Um, the guy from Monk is in it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so good, man. It's all on Amazon Prime. Uh, and then I just started listening to a new podcast. Well, it's not a new podcast. It's new to me called Kentucky Fried Chatting. And <laughs> it's, they're all like 10-ish minute episodes. And it's these Australian people and they review items from the Kentucky Fried Chicken menu. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that is the most obscure concept. Yeah. It is so funny. They're all comedians and I mean it's so good. I I mean it's like ten minutes out of your day to listen to these goofballs. How We're, often do they put a uh, I think it's like every other week or okay. something like that. There's not a whole lot of episodes. Um, but they're just drop dead. Yeah, it's it's so funny. Anyway, <laughs> like Kentucky Fried Chat. <laughs> so great. <laughs> That's beautiful. I always wonder if the conception of Kentucky is like outside of Kentucky. They all think that we just eat here on a regular basis. Yeah, like we go probably. to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Everybody loves KFC. It's a <laughs> daily thing. <laughs> oh, you didn't have your KFC today? Weird. Yeah. Oh, and you're wearing shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Did you have your hair of the dog, your bourbon this morning? <laughs> Did you, yeah, like, no. No, that was I yesterday. Had <laughs> coffee with my bourbon, but <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's good though. Putting bourbon in coffee. Yeah. Just yeah. Anyway, so to kick off 2019, uh, I this was presented to me in a very obscure way via um, we'll, we'll say text message. How's that sound? Um, where Curtis Conrad presents us with what's been going on in pop culture recently. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the very first installment of Kurt Your Enthusiasm. Curtis, what do you have for us this week on Kurt Your Enthusiasm? Well, I have some good stuff. And I really think that it just just really shows what 2018 was about. So <laughs> I, I was on Twitter the other day. I saw a, a tweet that said, and it was a meme, and it said, Man, I made it through 2018, but that bitch can fight. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked up. I saw it and was just like, that was my 28. And I feel like everyone resonated with it. Every like everyone I like talked about or saw a tweet about 2018, they were all like, Yeah, man, 20, 2018 was a gr- like a good year. Okay. I, I ha- survived it, like I made through it. But damn, that bitch can fight. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a picture of you from Bourbon and Beyond <laughs> with, uh, with the caption. <laughs> Luckily, there were no photos from that. I don't think. <laughs> well, that was uh, Kurt, your enthusiasm for the first time. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, we look forward to that being a new segment in the in the future as well. So We're thank you. Need this every week, <laughs> okay, every yeah. single week. Yeah, thank you, Curtis. <laughs> Let me get on Twitter real quick. <laughs> Let's end this episode. Let's end this episode, yeah. That about does it. Thank you all so much for listening. 2018 was a really fantastic year, I think, for us in general. And I think 2019 is going to be even better. At least I hope hope so. We'll find out. But anyway, um, thank you all for listening. Curtis and Swan, where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at Kurt underscore Con 15 and on Instagram at Kurt Con. Um, I'm at the Bourbon Finder. That's pretty much the only place I'm active. Um, shoot me a message. Ask me some questions if you got them. I'll be there. And then if you want to follow me, I am at pbritter1492 on social media, pretty much across the board. If you want to follow the show, we are at my Bourbon Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you would like to check out some of our merch and apparel, you can head to bourbonshop.threadless.com. Uh, we still have some uh, free shipping going on right now for orders over $45. For domestic listeners and $80 for um, international listeners. And then if you would like to uh, become a patron of the show, you can head to patreon.com slash podcast for as little as a dollar a month. That helps us out so much. We have a really great community growing right there. Swan's a part of it, too. Definitely um, recommend it. You're getting bonus podcasts every month. Uh, we're going to start doing... Once we hit our next goal, we're going to start doing exclusive live streams for the patrons as well. Um, There's some awesome little rewards as well, such as like exclusive content, um, some free shirts too from the from the shop. So yeah, it's a good time. Bourbonshop.threadless or no, excuse me, Patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. I was thinking of where you can actually get the shirts from. That's where I screwed up. Uh, please give us a five star rating review on iTunes. That helps us out so much uh, that it's just as good as you telling your friends about listening to the show. Um, That helps other people find us and lets them, you know, access the show more more easily. I think that about does it, though. I'm not sure what's going to happen next week (laughs) right now because it's kind of flying by the seat of my pants right right now in uh, 2019. But we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. I'm Swan. And this is my Bourbon Podcast. Podcast.